Well, for a closer look at how the pandemic is exposing a deep economic divide, I spoke to Betsy Leondar Wright. She's an associate professor of sociology at LaSalle University. And I first asked her about COVID-19's impact on essential workers and their right to higher pay. Of course, we don't know the future, um, but I certainly hope so. There's this outpouring of solidarity and valuing of literally our lives depend on all these people, frontline workers now, you could say essential workers. But if they're essential workers, why don't we give them the essentials? So our, our society is um, notorious for and not giving access to health, to social services, to living wages. And um, I think there's, there's a lot of awareness right now of how much people don't have that. But it it's, would take real political will and um, some real organized efforts to turn the, the temporary appreciation into permanent changes. So then what could some of these workers do to really leverage their current position with some of these political leaders and policymakers to ensure that they might be able to get some of those protections? Well, going on strike, as Amazon workers have done, many workers have said um, a lot around the protective, personal protective equipment, keep us safe or we're not working. Um, I think there are some organized venues for political pressure, but not nearly as much as in the past in the heyday of American unions. It's very, very difficult to be an organized political force or an organized social movement when you are so scattered and literally now isolated from each other, people doing delivery in their separate cars. So I think it's a big task, but I'd love to see, I would immediately put on a bumper sticker if someone made it that said, I'm an essential worker and I vote. And we've certainly seen that when it comes to frontline workers in the medical field, they really have received a lot of public support. Why do you think we're not seeing that same sort of support when it comes to other sort of gig workers, people making these deliveries, because they're, they're still essential workers? Yeah, for sure. I think it's who's visible to us and who's invisible to us. And, you know, it really is just a terrible catastrophe what happened to meatpacking workers that that's just criminal to leave people working at close quarters, doing work that was already dangerous and low paid, and then um, you know, not, not protecting them so that now they're, that's the biggest hot spot of COVID um, infections as a profession is meat packers. Now, do you think that this crisis will finally break what one labor leader has described as America's addiction to low wages? Well, again, it depends. Um, I think I could be a pessimist and say no, because the, um, the same erosion of our labor rights um, and uh, of the rate of unionization, the same, we don't really have a political party that represents working people. Um, all of that structural weakness of working people is still there, and that would have to change first. But I can also say, an optimistic view um, that we've got a very huge election coming up and um, people are willing to really extend themselves in solidarity with essential workers. So there's a lot more middle class allies and those of us lucky enough to be able to work at home. Um, so I, I have my hopes. Um, one of the things I'm a scholar of is social movements and um, moments of um, when, when does a mass movement for progressive change tend to happen? It's when everybody's, you know, shaken out of the normal complacency. Um, so moments of crisis, moments where everybody's paying attention at once um, to, a, to a crisis or a, um, a political opportunity, that often is when movements arise. So uh, I am hopeful that we will see that happening. We've certainly seen this pandemic highlight how disproportionately affected um, people of color are, not just when it comes to how the, the virus is affecting them, but disproportionately, especially among black people, when it comes to how this is affecting them health and socioeconomically. That's right. Why is that happening and what can be done to counter that? Well, we have um, decades and generations of institutionalized racism in this country. So if you say who goes without health insurance, disproportionately people of color, uh, who works low-wage um, jobs, who lives in overcrowded housing. Um, it's African-Americans, but also um, undocumented immigrants 
who also, of course, are not eligible for virtually any social services um, beyond um, emergency rooms. So um, those are the communities that, and those are the same communities that are affected by pollution through environmental racism, uh, environmental classism. So um, this is uh, the populations that are already crowded, already sick, already don't have savings and don't aren't homeowners. Um, that's where it's, it's uh, spreading the fastest. So then when you have a crisis like this, that's really highlighting social problems, economic problems and political problems as well. Um, it makes you wonder how closing the pay gap could really impact the broader economy. What's your take on that? Well, we are, of course, a weaker, a weaker economy um, for uh, about three decades now because we underpay people so much. Uh, there's this delusion that trickle down the supply side economics of cutting taxes on the rich is somehow going to lift all boats. And um, that's been disproven over and over again. And, uh, you know, I've been part of many good organizations that have advocated for demand driven economic growth, where everybody does better because everybody does better. Um, so if you raise wages at the bottom, this has been shown in studies of minimum wage increases and increases in unionization rates, um, then uh, the, economy, the economy grows because more people are, have money to spend in our local businesses. And we're, so we're, this is our chickens coming home to roost. This is the underinvestment in working people um, and the... Um, leaving people with so little safety net, um, that's been a problem, a growing problem uh, over recent decades. And now we're discovering that people really don't have the, um, the cushion um, or the, the, the government programs or anything to get them through a crisis of this magnitude. 